Thank you so much, Rafael, for inviting me and organizing such a wonderful conference, and thank you all for being here. So the title uh, is more than intriguing, I hope. It's a little bit provocative. I must say two things. Uh, it's not my fault. Uh, as you know, this is the title of, of a famous book by Jerry Cohen. Uh, and second, as you will see in the end, uh, it, it's less provocative than, than uh, uh, it seems at the first glance. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to talk about uh, the place of egalitarianism in animal ethics in particular. Uh, I, I will not go through the, the clarifications that, uh, thankfully, uh, Ben has already made, so I'm uh, a political philosopher, a moral philosopher. I'm not very much into legal theory, but I do think, as uh, Ben was saying, that to many extent, law is based on uh, morals, at least some parts of law, of course, not all of them. And so I'm going to focus on uh, the role of equality, specifically in animal ethics. Um, why this? Because, as we can see, um, there's been a tendency in viewing uh, 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 moral problems, first <coughs> in terms of inclusion of individuals that were excluded, and second in terms of a claim for equal consideration. Okay, that is very that is a standard way in the in the reconstruction of human rights uh, or democratic theory and so on and so forth. Uh, Peter Singer famously said that uh, the, the, the that animal interest is the new thing, that animals are the new entities that should be included in the expanding circle of moral considerability. And, uh, uh, but my question is, what kind of inclusion? Should be inclusion, to some extent, or equal inclusion, as some people say? To anticipate a little bit, my claim will be that uh, claiming for equality in the overall uh, uh, advocacy of animal rights and animal interests might be risky because the justification of equality in the sense that I'm going to talk about in a moment is very difficult and poses many problems. Um, and so I think that the overall cause uh, Ben said that, that I am uh, skeptical. I'm skeptical on some issues, but I'm not skeptical in general. Uh, this is why at least I'm here. Uh, uh, the, the overall claim for consideration of animal interests uh, risks being weakened rather than strengthened by claiming for equality in the sense that I'm going to talk about it in a moment. OK. Uh, Second specification, uh, I'm going to talk about equality of status. What do I mean? I'm going to talk about theories that concern the moral status, moral standing of an individual, uh, which means that such an individual, qua, qua individual, uh, deserves consideration as such. Okay? Whether this is equal or not, it doesn't interest us at the moment, but the focus is on equal theories concerning the quality of status. Okay, This uh, sets aside uh, uh, Peter Singer's famous um, idea of equal consideration of interests. Okay, Why? Because Singer said that the equal consideration of interest is a radical alternative to the equality of status because he thought that equality of status tends to be speciesist in, so far, in assuming that some individuals, typical humans in the common sense, are superior to others in terms of status. Um, I, so I, I'm focusing on theories concerning equality of status. So I, 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 I leave aside uh, Peter Singer's uh, idea, although I think that uh, ultimately the, the equal consideration of interest uh, needs some consideration of status, okay? But I don't want to talk about that now. So, uh, my uh, main
main, the main part of my argument is outlining the distinction between two issues, the, what I call the logic of inclusion and the logic of, of equality. So if you remember at the beginning, uh, we were talking about uh, moral programs, moral progress, sorry, in terms of inclusion of individuals in the domain of moral considerability and the claim of whether we should include such individuals equally or not. I think that for some reasons, or some good or bad reasons, uh, there's been a tendency to claim for equal inclusion for animals too, but I think that this poses some problems, as we will see in a moment. But first of all, let's outline the logic of inclusion, which is pretty simple. So, there's a property which is morally considerable for some reason, and depending on the theory, such a property might be sentience, humanity, moral agency, the fact of being alive, whatever. Second step, the possession of such a property grants moral considerability. This subject or this set of subjects possess this property. Hence, conclusion, this subject or set of subjects should be recognized moral considerability. Whatever moral considerability means, it might mean many different things depending on the theory. <coughs> but this argument is valid and uh, is applicable to a number of theories and approaches. Now let's see the logic of equality uh, argument, which is different and poses specific problems. The first step is called the principle of formal equality and says that equals should be treated equally and equals unequally. This was first outlined by Aristotle, long time ago, <coughs> it's still valid, uh, it's correct, but it says very, very little. It just says that equality as a moral principle should be applied only to those which are equal in some sense, to be specified. How to specify that? Then we have the second step, B. We need uh, a specification of the relevant property which I call here P star, in virtue of which uh, 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 some entities, some individuals, may be considered equal in the morally relevant sense. What is such a property? Okay, if you are a speciesist, you think that humanity is sufficient, uh, necessary and sufficient, okay? You know, this has problems, so we're not gonna talk about that. If you are a Christian, you might think that being a fellow creature is the property, okay? If you are Alastair Cochrane, you think that sentience is the property. If you are uh, John Rawls, you think about uh, moral personality and so on and so forth, okay? This is the basis of equality, the property in virtue with, of which uh, entities might be considered equals. Then, uh, next step. Um, once we have a basis of equality, we can say, well, these entities are equal in some sense, in the relevant sense, and then they should be treated equally, while other entities are not. Okay, the last step is just saying these entities should be treated equally in a, in a way that we, we, we should specify. What way? Well, it depends. Uh, it can be, well, they, they should have Equal and equal, those who are equals in some sense uh, uh, should be recognized rights or should have equal opportunities, equal amount of welfare, depending on the theory, okay? So the difficult parts in this argument, the logic of equality, uh, are the second and the fourth steps. So the basis of equality, finding, finding a property in which, in which, in which individuals are equal, and uh, the last implication, in what way should we treat such individuals as equals? What is the correct normative response? So I, I, I call the two uh, fundamental steps from B to D, the egalitarian rounding, okay? And the other step uh, uh, from D to B, the appropriateness requirement, meaning that the kind of normative response should be appropriate to the basis of equality, okay? 
This seems obvious, but implications are not, that we will see in a moment. Now, uh, I'm going to be, I hope, sufficiently quick here. Now, I'm going to talk about three theories, if I can, very important theories that have uh, an apparently very important egalitarian component uh, at the, in their core. And uh, they have something in common, meaning that the egalitarian dimension seems to be very important, but in fact, I think, is unnecessary for some reasons that we will see in a moment. First one is Paul Taylor's uh, theory of respect for nature. is in between uh, animal rights theories and environmental theories, but it's very important, I think. It's very important also because it seeks to provide a, an egalitarian foundation. As you might, might know, um, he says that all living beings are teleological centers of life in the sense that each is a unified, coherently ordered system of goal-oriented activities that has constant tendency to protect and maintain the organism existence. This includes animals, but also, not only animals, but also plants, other kind, any kind of living organism, okay? And on this, this is the basis of equality in his theory. Uh, in his view, all living beings, uh, as such, have an equal inherent worth because the different ways in which all the living organisms cannot be reduced to a set of values or standards that are typically human and anthropocentric. Okay. So he wants to be egalitarian all the way down at the basic level of any kind of living entity. Very radical, very interesting. Uh, what is the problem? Um, I think that in terms of practical implication, his theory is very reasonable. The problem is that uh, uh, it seems to me the egalitarian dimension is, at best, unnecessary. Okay. First of all, because um, the, the grounding, the egalitarian grounding, is very minimal. Because all what all natural entities share is so minimal, too minimal to be morally significant. And second, because the normative response is merely symbolic. Why? Because he says that. Uh, of course, uh, clash of interests and conflicts uh, between uh, moral agents, humanity, and the interests of nature are obvious and necessary. So he provides a long list of rules that we ought to adopt in order to uh, give priority to an entity or to another, depending on the cases, because conflicts of uh, interest and clashes are uh, uh, obvious and necessary. But uh, what comes out is that if human interests are sufficiently important and not trivial, then human beings uh, are justified in pursuing their interest uh, uh, against nature. Okay. Um, in other cases in which there is not a conflict between sufficiently legitimate interest, uh, the idea of equality is egalitarian basis simply provides us with a reason to consider the interests of natures, of the nature and of animals, but it doesn't provide a reason to consider uh, such an interest on a par with human interests. So, in the end, it seems that Taylor's argument uh, is a case for inclusion of animals and natural ent entity in the domain of moral considerability. Um, insofar as human interests are more important and more weighty than the interest of natural entities, so the role of equality is merely symbolic. Okay, now let's see. Probably, you know, Tom. I assume you know Tom Regan pretty well, the most important theorist in animal rights. Uh, paradoxically, I, uh, the conclusion is that he, he has a similar problem. So the basis of equality in his view is the idea of being a subject of a life. All subjects of a life, subject of a life is any animal, any, any mammal, sorry, at least aged one in his view, uh, have equal inherent value 
and should be recognized equal rights. So equal rights is the normative implication justified by the basis of equality. Um, so the question is, what does this egalitarian status do in its theory? And to understand this, I think we should look at uh, the famous lifeboat case. You know the case, there's a lifeboat with five individuals on board, four of which are human persons, and one is a dog. And he says, well, the, uh, the common sense says that we should throw over, uh, sorry, but the, 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 the lifeboat um, um, can, uh, I mean, uh, uh, cannot uh, keep more than five individuals. So one should be thrown overboard. And the common sense says, well, look, we should throw overboard um, the dog. And Regan says, this is correct, but not for the grounds that are typically, typically taken to be valid in the common sense, meaning, meaning not on species grounds, but because if we were to throw overboard uh, a human being, we would more significantly harm the human being than the dog, because the opportunities and the kind of life that the human being would typically have had are much more significant and important than those of a dog. Okay, so this is the non species ground for preferring the human being over the dog in Regan's view. Well, <clears throat> so far so good. But then he says, well, look, but we don't have to look at these cases, these exceptional cases, uh, because uh, in, in our uh, ordinary life, uh, 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 standard exploitation of animals is unjustified, of course. Um, and uh, uh, the case for uh, equal rights and the idea that all animals, uh, all subjects of a life, have equal inherent value can rule out and reject all the ordinary exploitation of animals, and that is certainly correct. However, in order to get this idea, in order to reject all the standard practices of exploitation, it would have been sufficient to say that animals have fundamental interests or fundamental rights, not necessarily equal rights. Uh, 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 that would, be, would have been easier and more than sufficient. Okay. Why do I say that? I say that because in the end, uh, the role of equality seems mostly symbolic because it doesn't uh, justify egalitarian treatment in hard cases like the, um, uh, the lifeboat case and is unnecessary in ordinary cases. So now, uh, now I had a, a slide on, on the Alas de Cochrane uh, theory of equal sentience, but I don't have time to talk about that. So. If you want, we can talk about that during the Q&A. So I want to just uh, switch to the conclusion. I, I have, I think, a couple of minutes. Maybe Three. One, one, two more minutes, yes. OK. So uh, what do we have from this? Well, uh, I, I just say that by analyzing Alastair Cochrane uh, theory, we have similar implications. So unnecessary and merely symbolic role of equality. What are the implications? The implications are that, as we, um, as it is pretty known in the in the, literature, in the literature on the basis of equality, it's extremely difficult to justify uh, equal status uh, for I mean for persons first, for humanity even more, and for a larger set of individuals even more difficult. Why? Because typically we do not have a property. There is no property in nature that is naturally equal, because all the morally relevant properties are variable. Okay? So there are different strategies to tackle this problem, and if you want, we, we can talk about that in the, in the Q&A. We can think of a naturally binary property, but I'm quite skeptical about that, or a range property. This poses problems, but I think it's a viable perspective. And second, we have to think about the correct normative response from, so from B to B. 
um, how to normatively respond to the equal possession of a property. My uh, idea, my impression is that merely symbolic responses uh, won't do because, as we have seen, they do not deliver an egalitarian treatment in hard cases and they are unnecessary in ordinary cases. And why should, we, should it be a problem? One could say, well, look, symbolic uh, responses, symbolic equality still is something. And you might say, well, yes, it is something, but it's very difficult to justify. And I think that insofar as the difficulty of justifying egalitarianism, uh, I think that we should uh, mm, uh, try to um, use it uh, for something that we cannot achieve uh, and get in other easier ways. So it should deliver something specific equality that couldn't be achieved in other easier manner. So what's the conclusion? That we should be parsimonious in egalitarianism, parsimonious in defining the class of individuals uh, which are equal in some relevant sense. That is an open question. So my, my conclusion is open. It is not necessarily skeptical, it's open. Because I don't think it is necessarily the case that only a very restricted class of individuals can be egalitarian, but still, very inclusive classes like Taylor's idea, um, in such approaches, individuals share a property that is too minimal to be morally relevant, like the idea of being a living organism. Okay. But still, there are problems with more restricted classes because we have the problem of drawing the appropriate threshold, the boundary of this class of equal entities, and the problem of the variability of objection, which I have not talked about, not talked about, and if you want, we can talk about that later on. Uh, so there are many problems in justifying equality of status, and I think that the case for animal rights and animal advocacy can, in many cases, dispense with that and focus on the strength and importance of animal interests without uh, claiming for the equality of such an interest. And uh, because I think that the claim for equality, in some sense, in some ways, might have a, a rhetorical force, but not necessarily uh, a sufficiently justified philosophical grounding. Thank you all. <laughs>